Namaste. So now we come to a very interesting turn in the development of the themes of Sri Aparokshanubhutihi. So far, we have established that Atman, Brahman, is the self, and that the material world and body are illusion. And then we develop discrimination, viveka, between the body and the self. And now we're going to go into an examination of how this apparent difference is actually illusory. Thus, the view that the body is the Atman has been denounced by the enunciation of the difference between the Atman and the body. Now is clearly stated the unreality of the difference between the two. No division in consciousness is admissible at any time, as it is always one and the same. Even the individuality of the jiva must be known as false, like the delusion of a snake in a rope. As through the ignorance of the real nature of the rope, the very rope appears in an instant as a snake, so also does pure consciousness appear in the form of the phenomenal universe without undergoing any change. So this is far out. This is really far out. Because if you look into all systems of Vedic philosophy or transcendental wisdom in general, they always uh, advise discrimination between the body and the self, between matter and spirit. And then so many reasons are given because they have opposite qualities and so on like that. Matter is dull and insentient, whereas the self is consciousness itself. So how is it possible that we could mistake them for one thing? Well, it's possible through the psychological mechanism of superimposition. And so in the last couple of videos, we've been over this theory of superimposition and how it leads to the delusion that the body is the self. But now, Aparokshanabhuti turns, pivots, and takes up the theme that this difference between body and self is actually illusory. Now, how is this possible? Huh? And why, after all this talk about discrimination, does the Advaita teaching suddenly say it's all one? There's a good reason for it, and here it is. In the beginning of spiritual life, we are basically addicted to superimposition. We are forced by deeply ingrained habit and the association of other materialistically conditioned beings to superimpose the body on the self and the self on the body. Uh, this mutual superimposition of body and self leads to all kinds of suffering because we develop completely false ideas about who we are, what we are, what we're doing here, what should be done, what should not be done, so on and so forth. And we all know this because we're all suffering and we're looking for a way out. So the Advaita teaching in general and Shankaracharya's presentation of it in particular detail the way out. And yes, it begins from discrimination viveka, between matter and spirit, between the body and the self. We have to be able to clearly recognize which is which. 
and not falsely superimpose one on the other. That is required. Otherwise, what's the use of our meditation? What's the use of our puja, our bhakti, our devotion, our sadhana? If we think that I am the body, huh? I mean, the, the best that could come out of that is getting a better body in the future, either in this life or in the next life. But that's still duality. That's still conditioned existence. That is still suffering. So then, how do we get out of this? Well, first we have to uh, decondition ourselves from this habit of superimposition through viveka, discrimination. Then we have to shift our identity, our identification, who we think we are, from the body and mind to the self, consciousness. And as we discussed in another recent video, see that it is not that we are a conscious being within a body, within a world. It is that we are a conscious being and the body and the world are within us. Try to understand the distinction. The distinction here is between context and content. The meaning of the content is determined by the context. That's how a simple word like up or as can have different meanings in different contexts. Fill the tank up has one meaning. Go up the hill has a completely different meaning for the word up. How do we know? By the context. Similarly, whether the body and the world are the context or the content of our experience has a total effect on the meaning that we perceive. <clears throat> so if the world is the context of the body and the body is the context of consciousness, that means consciousness is conditioned by given its meaning by the world and the body. But if it's the other way around, that consciousness is the context and the body and the world are the contents of that consciousness, that means the meaning of the body and the mind and the world and everything we experience is completely different. This is the real meaning of Advaita philosophy. Because consciousness cannot be divided. Huh? The material world is called Jagrat and material consciousness. Because Jagrat means a multiplicity of objects. Therefore, consciousness is just one object among many in the material view, Dvaita Vada, duality consciousness. But from the spiritual point of view, everything is Brahman, Sarva Kalvidang Brahma. Huh? That's from the Chandogya Upanishad. It means everything is Brahman. Everything is consciousness. And it's a fact. If we simply observe, <laughs> Everything that we experience shows up in consciousness, even God, even the universe and everything. So all of these multiple objects that we experience in the material world are objects of consciousness. So consciousness is the unifying factor. Consciousness is the ultimate context that gives meaning to everything. That's why viveka is necessary, to establish the proper order of things. Huh? The Brahma Sutra or Vedanta Sutra begins with the phrase, 
Atato Brahma Jignasa. And Jignasa is a deep word. It has many different meanings, but the one I want to focus on now is that it sets out an orderly arrangement of things. Like Aparokshanu Bhutihi. Huh? Aparokshanu means a specific methodology comprised of certain order of states, steps or stages. So in other words, it is a technique, it is a method, it is a sadhana, it is a means for attaining enlightenment, for discerning the truth. So what is this truth? It is that everything is consciousness, sarva kalvidang brahma. Everything is Brahman. Therefore, even the so-called Maya, the illusion, the material creation, the body, the mind, and all these different multiple objects are actually Brahman. Boom. What else could they be? Well, from the point of view of discrimination, we say there's Brahman, huh? Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya. That's another saying from Shankaracharya's teaching. Brahma Satyam, Brahman is the truth. Jagan Mitya, these multiple objects are illusion, delusion, maya, that which is not. Well, then, if they are not what they seem to be, what they appear to be, what are they? Sarva Kalvidang Brahma. Everything is Brahman. So everything is Brahman. Even Maya is Brahman, as we went into in great detail in the series on the goddess Sri Vidya. There is uh, Nirguna Brahman, which is what everyone commonly knows as the self, I, uh, the consciousness in everything. And then there's Saguna Brahman, Brahman with qualities. So Saguna Brahman appears within Nirguna Brahman as the creation and is known as Shakti, the power and Nirguna Brahman appears within that creation as Shiva, the auspicious one. And the interplay between the two is a wonderful pastime of liberation, salvation, the drama of salvation. And this is the primary theme of the entire Vedas. So, in other words, the very existence of Maya is actually Maya. <laughs> this is so far out. It's like Maya squared. Huh? That there is no really of no illusion. There is only Brahman. So even what appears to be illusion Huh? I mean, the illusion of the multiple objects of the creation is maya, right? But even maya is itself an illusion. This is mind-boggling. But it means that everything is Brahman. Everything is nothing but pure consciousness. And it's only through delusion caused by superimposition of apparently irreconcilable differences, like the body-mind being uh, unconscious machines, huh? karmic uh, cause-and-effect-driven uh, automata, and the self being one, pure consciousness without an object. So then where do all these objects come from and what is their meaning? Well, the meaning is that they're illusion. So in the beginning of spiritual life, 
we have to distinguish between reality and illusion, between Brahman and Maya. But then, as we approach the ultimate stage of complete realization, we have to see that Brahman and Maya are actually not different. That the illusion of the illusion is simply illusory. <laughs> and nothing but the reality of Brahman actually exists. And in the succeeding verses, this will be clarified and amplified and analyzed in great detail. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.